so yeah so we yeah we obviously um we've got we've got the uh the world's first integrated system um we went for hps well as as you said we've got hps and um led um really it's two different things we're after obviously out here on the pitch we've gone for hps because we're looking for something slightly more intensive you know we need, we need quicker recovery times you know obviously not this year due to covid but we were due to have like rugby and maybe rugby league in and amongst you know a full premier league season um whereas in the car park it is just literally about keep you know just keeping the grass ticking over while no, while it's true. parked in there we're not actively trying to grow it we're just trying you don't need it just there, right? a, no exactly yeah and because of the proximity to the um led lights yeah um we, yeah we, we couldn't have that heat and also i think with hps out here as well if you look at the structure obviously it spans 70 meters yeah. Um, obviously, with LED, you'd probably have to have more units and, and stuff on the rig. Whereas here, with uh, as you can see, you can see they're fairly well spread out. There's only three lines on each rig. And yeah. when we've got all six out, it gives us 110 metres in length of, of light, essentially. Yeah, this is uh, a good point you mentioned, uh, Gary. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know the system or have never seen it, uh, Google it. Uh, go to our website. You will see some videos. It's, it's really impressive. What it is, it's it's a fully integrated system coming from behind the goals, uh, and there's not a single beam or wheel on the grass. So it's a full uh, width of the pitch that is uh, spent. And like you say, Gary, that was also one of the challenges. Uh, first of all, uh, HPS was was fine because there was heat required uh, uh, when the pitch was out in the stadium. And second of all, from an engineering point of view, LED would have been even more a challenge. And I can tell you that uh, SCX, uh, the, the company that did your sliding pitch and was also the engineering partner on this project, um, already had a real challenge to engineer this. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great structure. And, and yeah, it, it's impressive now, but I can tell you when you're there, it's even, even more impressive. To you, it must become uh, normal now, Gary, or not? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, yeah. it's nice for us operationally because obviously we don't have to move them to like do cutting and stuff like that. Um, I guess the other bonus as well of, of using the HPS and obviously, as you can see, they're quite well spread out. And But where these live, uh, where these rigs actually live is only in a nine metre void in the stand. Yeah. So though we, when they're all um, folded out, obviously they do the whole length of the pitch, but when they're actually put away, they, they, fold, they all fold into nine metres, basically. Yeah, that's great. Also... Uh, on, on this topic that we've been discussing today, sustainability, from that point of view, uh, what might be interesting to know is that all these lights are, are clustered in sections, relatively small sections, and they can all be uh, uh, controlled individually. So with all the measurements we are doing with the analyzer system uh, and all the data we are gathering on the portal, uh, Gary can run his rigs on a fully automatic mode where it's exactly calculated how much light is needed and which section should be on. Uh, for a certain number of hours or not. Um, so that's also, like we said already, there's there's many ways of being sustainable. Hi, Gary. Good to have you. Hi, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. So I thought you might be so, missing me. Uh, so you see here, we are in the car park. Uh, now it's used as a car park. Whenever the natural grass pitch slides in, obviously the cars are gone. Uh, and then um, the entire pitch, uh, over 7,000 square meters, is is lit at the same time by the LED system. So this is the largest LED system in, in the world used for, uh, for pitch lighting, grass lighting. Um, quite spectacular and, and quite innovative, obviously, because you can imagine that growing grass in an environment like this, um, uh, well, Gary has to cut the grass while lying, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah, on my knees. Yeah, yeah, on his knees. <laughs> so you see here that, that the space, obviously it's a car park, uh, so it's very, uh, uh, restricted in terms of height when the pitch is in at some point Gary there's only a few inches or, or 20 yeah so yeah so if you imagine that, that this was this was put in or it was designed sort of after the the stand had been designed so the reason it splits is to get around the beams you can see in front of me just here and then um, obviously we've got these cross members so in these places it can go down to like you know maybe like 12 inches and stuff like that um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you through um, so before we go to the LED, just a few of the other systems. So up here, this is uh, what we use to push air across it to, um, to keep it dry and just keep the air moving. Obviously, it's quite a sort of humid environment as well. So th these also dehumidify it. Um, 
yeah, on the on the floor there, these are the these are the rails that it um, travels in on. Yeah. And then obviously, then if we come into this uh, lovely pink area, we've got uh, we've got our LED system. Yeah. And obviously, no infrared. You mentioned uh, there, Gary. No, no. We um, yeah, we we obviously when it's in here, it's a huge thermal mass that's in here, so it does get quite warm in here anyway. And actually, we do, we we do we can control the temperature as an average over the whole thing. We've got like eight sensors in which work out an average. So we, obviously, we're trying we're we're trying to slow down the growth while it's in here because we can only cut it using robotic mowers. That's what these cables are up here for. Um, but obviously, they can't collect, so we don't obviously want that much organic going back onto it over the two-week period. So, so, so you ideally you want to. Uh, after let's say a week or 10 days you want to drive it back in the stadium in the exact same state uh, nothing nothing worse but also not with a lot of growth happening or, or whatever yeah exactly I mean we, we obviously we, we, we use like a PGR as well to regulate the growth um, but yeah obviously our, big, our biggest thing in here is obviously um, you know we're in an indoor environment we're bringing a big thermal mass in that's wet and it's, you know, it's hot. So obviously we're trying to keep disease pressure down. That's why we've got all these other systems in place. Yeah. Um, so that's probably our, that's our biggest worry is getting disease. And that's why we did put so much infrastructure in here. And then, and then, and then it's just literally, I mean, um, I can't remember the exact figure, but the, the micro moles that we get uh, from the uh, PAR sensors in here are literally just enough to, just enough for the grass plant over a 24 hour period. All right. Yeah. Do you leave the um, lights on twenty four seven, Gary, when it's in there? Uh, we don't. We um, we we do turn them off for um, you know, sort of, sort of five or six hours a day. Just right. you know, just you know, it's sort of it's it's just to give it that sort of natural cycle. Yeah, yeah. As it yeah. were. Okay, very good. And just just to make it clear, obviously you've now turned only a section on, but. Uh, normally, it's it's almost that full car park that we see now. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. Where LED must be. Yeah, this uh, well, that, that, the wall you're looking at back there. The pitch literally slides to within a meter of that, so it's yeah. literally the whole car park. Yeah. yeah.